All right, anyone in this room not aging? All right, this is great. Okay, my wonderful friend, Barbara Earl, will you come up here? Everybody, who has a smartphone? Everybody have a smartphone? Would you please get those out and put them on mute, or as I like to call it, stun? Because if it goes off in your pocket, you know what I mean. Um, those of you who don't, Barbara's going to give you a half sheet of paper and a pen, or unless you have your own pen, that's fine. Thank you, dear woman. Barbara and I were classmates together in the Biola Bold program. Does anybody know what that is? Yes, okay. It is the adult degree completion program here at Biola, and BOLD stands for Biola's Organizational Leadership Degree. And um, org leadership is about business development. It is a marvelous program. And I do encourage you, anybody who thinks you'd like to go back to school to look into that. Okay. I want to tell you today a great welcome. Welcome from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank Dan uh, for what he said at the very end of his um, talk because it was a perfect segue into mine. What do I hate? I hate seeing bad aging. I hate to see people lose out on that successful aging that there is for all of us. My heart is broken, everyone, when I see seniors who either by the genes that were dealt to them or lifestyle or poverty age badly. My heart is broken when I see the ageism that is prevalent and will only grow in our society today. These are the things that I want to fight, and I just light up to be able to talk to people about their own success in aging. So we're going to move forward. Um, I wrote a book, and I bought, brought 12 with me. If anyone would like them, just see me afterwards. That's fine. Now, my talk is really about your aging. I didn't bring that up earlier, but that's what we're going to do. Let's talk about your aging, because you know what? That's what you're really here for. Aging, what a word. Okay, can I sh have a show of hands of anyone in this room who does not have a qualm when they think about their own aging? Anyone not have a qualm about their own aging? Oh, hey, Stevie. <laughs> it's because he, he's so good at golf. He, he knows that no matter how old he is, he'll uh, be great at golf. But here's the thing. Aging is a word that scares us, and I'm going to tell you why as a gerontologist. This is very important, really, as a Christian. Everyone truly knows that the natural outcome of aging is death. And who in their right mind, except a Christian, would want to die? For us to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's right. So everyone in this room, you have no more excuse for fearing your own aging. So let's get into it. I love to get into it. Gerontology is a multifaceted discipline in education. It is the study and promotion of successful aging of human beings aged 60 and above. I am specific about that because I'm going to tell you right now at whatever age you are, get off the couch now. If you are near 60, get off the couch. If you are 20, get off the couch. Get off the couch in your brain. Get off the couch in your physical self. It is time now to fight, fight, fight. Every woman knows gravity wins. Well, you know what? Other things will win too, and I can hardly wait for our speaker on cancer because he's just got some great things to share with us. We don't want things to win in us that should not have a foothold in us, and that is every way possible, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. But today, I'm here to talk about aging. All right, what is successful aging? Well, in 1984, two doctors of psychology coined that term and defined it, and it is three things, and that is a high capacity for physical and mental functioning. Okay, and we all want that. Number two, a low risk of disease and disability. I'm not even talking death. Because, of course, I want you to age well. We're not going to talk about death. We're going to talk about life, all right? And the last thing is an active engagement with life. An active engagement with life. And I will tell you this. Your own aging has a lot to do with your DNA, with your gene pool, 
It's very important that you understand that Shakespeare said, know thyself for many reasons. You need to know yourself. You should have your family history. You should really ask those in your family who are older than you to remember some things if they haven't written them down. Who went through what? What things can you expect as you age? So you can start fighting them now. It's very important. But these three things do really talk about successful aging. My personal brand is success in aging, and this is what I believe. I believe that you can be, through your DNA, have either a high, medium, or low capacity for physical and mental functioning. I believe that not only your gene pool, but your um, risk-taking in your life, your lifestyle choices, et cetera, or what, what happens along the way, accidents, et cetera, environmental dis- uh, concerns, your risk of disease and di- of, uh, disability are kind of, you know, you don't have control of that all the time. You should take control of what you can. But I will tell you this, when you have an active engagement in the life that God gave you, you will win. You will have success in aging. Now, an active engagement of life, and I don't have enough time to really expand on everything, but what are your preferences? What color do you want to live in? You better plan to age with things that really make you feel good and that you work your best in over the years. My father would rather deal with a machine than with people. And he had six kids and wanted 12. And he never, ever played ball with us. But you know what? He worked in the space industry, and he got his hands on computers way sooner than most of society. And he helped his kids do technology, et cetera, when we had no, you know, the rest of society wasn't doing it. So everyone is gifted with their own. And those preferences and the things that God has put inside you, you actively engage with those, and you will have a better life. All right, gerontologist study, as Riley said, the biology, psychology, sociology, ethics, and lifespan development of humans age 60 and above. Academically, each one of those are very, very important. But if we studied these the same way that Dan has brought Africa into our minds again. Each one of these things, when you think about aging, I'm about to take you through an exercise that will take you from your cognitive self to your motive self. And I promise to take you back to your cognitive self. But as Dan so brilliantly brought up, until you deal with the emotive issues, you cannot deal with your cognitive issues. And so today, we're going to talk about aging emotively. All right, you know what I have found? I have found that it's very easy to talk about someone else's aging. Your mother and dad, if you have a grandparent, if you're younger, an aunt, an uncle, someone you don't think is either doing too good of a job of aging, or you love them so much, you truly want to see them thrive and flourish as they age. It's tough to face our own aging. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what things will cost when we're very old. We don't know if the healthcare system is going to be in place for us. We don't know if our families are gonna move far away and we're gonna be left almost alone. We don't know if we're gonna outlive all of our friends and where is our social connection going to be. We don't know so many things that cause people to fear greatly. So this is what we're going to, use to, going to work in today. We're going to talk about fears in aging, our own aging, versus our hopes in aging. And once you deal with your own fears and speak forth your own hopes, you will step into that place that you will be able to, to think Christianly to think gracefully about people that you might be able to reach out and help in aging. So, I want to read some scriptures today about age and what God has to say. All right, Genesis 25, 8 says, 
Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. Exodus 7-7. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. Leviticus 19.32, rise in the presence of the elderly and aged. Show respect for the elderly and revere your God. I am the Lord. Psalm 37.25, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Psalm 71, 17 through 18. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. Psalm 92, 12 through 15. The righteous will flourish as a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That is what our God believes about old age. Isn't that exciting? I have one more scripture to give you. I have been reading the One Year Bible since 1989 and absolutely love it. Today, my eyes fell on the proverb for today, and this is it. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. So I'm going to give you some honest answers about your aging today. All right, everyone, please see my exercise and elder speak. Does everyone have that in front of you, or can you see it here? All right, those of you with cell phones, I'd like you to type either in notebook or text yourself the answers to these. And here's how this exercise goes. I'm going to give you five minutes of quiet. In those five minutes, I want three answers to each of these questions. They will take you from your cognitive to your emotive self. And when you're done, we're going to talk amongst ourselves. I'll have you hold up your hands and call out your answers. And you are going to have some wonderful moments in the minutes ahead. All right, everyone. What does quality of living mean to you? Quality of living. This is from your preferences. This is the person God made you to be. Be absolutely honest. What does quality of living mean to you? Number two, what does your much older adult, loved one, or client look forward to in life? When you're answering these questions, I want you to put a senior citizen that you know or love or both in your mind and answer these questions. Lastly, what three things do you consider must-haves in your old age? All right, everyone, five minutes. All right. Everyone, if you would look at your answers, and I'm going to go through this with you right now, I'd like three of you to stand up who are really confident of question number one. What does quality of living mean to you? All right, you, sir, in the beard? In the beard? (laughs) Does that count? And who are you thinking of when you wrote that? Okay. Okay, so you specifically had your wife in mind. That's what you want for her. Someone else, would you give me, I need a woman now to give me your ideas. Woman? Okay. Okay, so we saw health with both. There was a health with both. We saw a lot of the similarities here. Any other man want to chime in? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so exactly right. You don't want Alzheimer's. You don't want disabilities in your body or mind, much like we're looking for social interaction, we're looking for purpose, etc. One more woman. Anyone have three things that you can read us? Woman? Hear me roar? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> okay, then I'll take those three and that's just fine. Next, what does your much older adult loved one or client look forward to in life? I need a man or a woman and tell me if it's a much older adult or a client. Come on, guys, I know you wrote stuff down. Okay, woman in the back, then Dan. How old is he? 84, her dad. Okay. Okay, so the, that's what he looks forward to, golf. So that's a physical and social. Girlfriends, again, social, but it's also caring companionship. Yes? And your third? Cooking. Wow. Okay, let's increase that in the male population. My husband cooks way better than I do, guys. Okay. Dan, what do you have? Yes. a great mentor, so she was investing in other people's lives. She had something to look forward to. She wanted to be published. She still wanted to write what was in her mind and her heart. Fantastic. Anyone else? Anyone else? You have a certain elder in mind, a senior, and boomer to senior. Anyone? Yes. A craft? Okay, and what's his favorite craft project? Is it woodworking or is it building? Fantastic. Okay, and does he live near or far to you? Lives in your house. God bless you. Okay, anyone else in this room have a parent or loved one live in their house? Okay. I just give you all the kudos. Um, I want you to know, everyone, that as of last year, 2011, the truth about America is this. 70% of every adult will be caring for someone for the next so many years of their life, and 60% of those people that are being cared for will be older or much older adults. This is a reality in America, and I will tell you, there are great myths about taking care of people in your home, seniors. Uh, when you come to this place, and it will statistically happen to you, make sure that you plug in with wonderful community resources. If you're anywhere near Orange County, you are in, uh, we are the number one county in America, Orange County, for cohesiveness between uh, social programs and also agencies. And um, I'll also have a ton of cards. You can always give me a call or email me, etc. All right, number three, what three things do you consider must-haves in your old age? And I'm going to start with anyone who is looking at me. So right there in the dark shirt, the younger man with a pencil. Purpose. Employment. And family. All right, and how, old, how long do you want to work in life? You want to work until they make you leave or you decide to. Okay, fantastic. Purpose, employment, and family. Awesome. Ma'am, what would you like? And health. All right. Health, church accessibility. That means she wants to be mobile on her own. She wants to be able to get there. She wants to make choices. So much about old age, everyone, is choices. Do you have the health and do you have the wealth? to do what you want. It doesn't take a lot of wealth 
to get to church, but it takes enough to have access to transportation or the bus or a friend, etc. Excellent answers. May I have your answers? Yes, read them. Exactly. A gentleman. Have I got a gentleman here in the red shirt? Good. Fantastic. Okay, and those are healthy relationships with both family and friends? Okay, we have health, we have social issues, we have um, security, that's or so, that are some of these issues. And I would like to see another female face. Uh, someone? Anyone right here? Yes? One more woman to say something? I need one woman. Really. The guys are winning right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, will one of you speak up? And just read the three things you wrote down? Fantastic. All right. Again, we have financial security, we have meaningful relationships, and that's a purpose in itself. And I want you to notice, everyone, did you see that men used short sentences and women used longer ones, but they both said the same thing? It's because aging is really a human condition, and it is wonderful to have each other as we age. So, you have faced some fears today. This is not easy, and especially not to do it in this short of amount of time. But you face some fears, but you've spoken out your hopes. And I'd like to end with a great epistle verse from Peter, and that is, go forth and do good things. Now that you've become in touch with some of your aging issues, please go forth and do good things. And remember, no one wants to age, but everyone wants to age well. God bless.